Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we have another brand new Mattel Jurassic World Dominion release to take a look at. This time we've got an extreme damage figure here, as we have a Trociraptor Tiger. So it's been a little bit since we uh, have had Jurassic World Dominion hit theaters. It's also been a little while since we had, you know, the toy line hit. And this is our first time outside of the basic figures. I'm not actually sure if this one came first or if the basic figure came first. But it took us a little while to finally get a tiger figure. And it's a, definitely a cool looking Atrociraptor. But the color scheme is not at all like what tiger looks like in the film. Which is a little bit of a depressing aspect of the figure. The actual, you know, Atrociraptor tiger in the film looks a lot more kind of like a Lost World Jurassic Park Velociraptor as far as the coloration goes, kind of sporting almost like a tiger striped raptor type look, whereas this one we have like reddish tones and stuff, so the overall tones of color on the body are definitely off compared to what tiger actually looked like in the film, but Outside of that aspect, it's still a pretty cool looking version of an Atrociraptor and it's definitely neat to finally have Tiger as this was I believe the only one left to acquire that we did not have previously out in these more mainline figures. But as far as the box art and everything goes, it's your standard when it comes to Dominion as well as this type of, you know, extreme damage figure. And then if you take a look here at the back, you can see again our Atrociraptor, kind of like a sneak peek of the Atrociraptor. And you can also see the other figures that are in this wave, which are the Pyroraptor as well as the Geniodectes. So some pretty cool stuff in there and uh, definitely a neat looking Atrociraptor. So let's pop it out of the box and check it out. And here is our Atrociraptor tiger and it looks really nice honestly like i like the pose i like the sculpt i like the fact that the tail is entirely different from previous atrociraptor releases this is kind of a retooled version of the previous atrociraptors as we have an action feature associated with this one as far as the extreme damage aspect goes and we also have different arms and different a definitely different tail and I think the neck might be slightly different, but I can't say that for sure. It's a little hard to tell, but uh, it still looks really cool. And just changing up the appearance of the arms and the tail absolutely has a bit of a you know different appearance for the Atrociraptor, which is cool. So uh, I do like that fact. And I also, again, like the in general appearance of this one as far as the color scheme that they've chosen. Even if it doesn't match Tiger nicely, it still looks pretty good here. So let's go ahead and jump straight to a closer look at it right now. So starting up here at the head sculpt of our Atrociraptor, you can see that the overall head sculpt looks like pretty much your uh, standard as far as the head sculpts of the Dominion Atrociraptors go when it comes to a Mattel version. I don't feel like the head sculpt itself has anything different compared to the previous releases of the figure detail wise, of course paint wise it does, as we have kind of like a reddish brown for the majority of the body coloration here and you can see that we have a really glossy kind of a black that borders around the eye and then up into the palette and just kind of stripes and designs throughout those areas and you also have a nice light tone of color kind of like a light gray for the lower jaw that does very very briefly run down into the throat mattel loves to do that where we just have this random little area of coloration in the throat and then we give up on that color don't know why they do that but that's the case for this one but again, the coloration does look pretty nice. I kind of like the glossy look. I can't say I really like it a lot. I'm not always a huge fan of it, but for some reason, Mattel somehow pulls that off pretty nicely. And uh, they've done it a few times now where they've added in like some glossy paint to the face and it looked good. This looks pretty okay, but not as nice as it has looked on some previous figures like the Ali Aramis. You do have some nicely painted eyes though with a yellow and we have a black pupil, of course, because the black coloration there, that kind of splotchy black, uh, usually would be like the coloration for the pupils so it works out nicely for this one because again it's a black tone so that exactly is what we would need for the pupil on the inside of the mouth you can see we have some nice realistic tones of color in there very very nice looking gloss coat inside the mouth as well you've also got a nicely painted tongue and the teeth sport kind of like a light yellow tone to them so that's also a plus adding a nice little element of realism to the teeth themselves 
Moving down here into the neck of our Atrociraptor, you can see it's just basically loaded with kind of creases and wrinkles and stuff, as well as some really nice skin texture. The scale detail looks beautiful on this Atrociraptor. And then as you move down a little bit further into the body, you continue to see how nice that scale detail looks. Very kind of lizard-like scale detail. But you can definitely see how the arms are quite different on this one compared to previous releases as the arms are held into the body a lot more so than the last few Atrociraptors. So I do really like that. I absolutely love the positioning of the arms. You can see there's nice muscle definition displayed, really nice hand sculpts, even though there's kind of like some plastic between the fingers, almost making it look like it has webbed fingers, which is a little bit of a downside. I just noticed that right now, but it's still a pretty nice looking hand sculpt regardless. And the nails look okay, but they unfortunately do not have paintwork as they usually don't. As you lead down here into the stomach region, you can see the extreme damage area. We have a nice amount of detail in that area. We have two slices on this side of our dinosaur, and you can also see there's a gorgeous gloss coat there on the inside, kind of replicating blood quite nicely. You can also see that we have some stripes that start right here on the top of the neck that lead down the course of the body, which really, again, shows off the fact that this could have looked nicely like the dinosaur from the film if we just used an orangish tone for the body. I really don't know why we didn't do that, and we chose to go with the reddish-brown version, but those stripes look really nice here as you run along the back of our Atrociraptor. You can also see the area where we would push the button to activate the extreme damage, as well as our Jurassic Facts app code. Might as well pull that out now and then show that to you guys so there you go if you would like to add this one to your collection but again the legs are the same as the previous atrociraptors after briefly looking at the two together here just a moment ago i can definitely say that as far as like the atrociraptor red figure that mattel has out currently it has the same legs as that one and also ghost actually would share that same sculpt but very nicely sculpted legs, sporting nice muscle definition, the knee and everything else. You can see as we move down from that reddish brown, it transitions to a really bright coloration here, kind of like a bright whitish or light grayish tone. And it looks okay, but it would have looked nicer had we actually had nail paint because we don't. Unfortunately, all of that is just still that whitish tone or that light grayish tone. And it really would have looked a lot nicer had we had you know, some darker coloration there on the nails. I feel like those nails would have really stood out. But it still looks okay with that coloration. It just kind of looks like he's wearing socks. And then as we lead up here into the back, we actually do continue to have some alternate coloration past the hip region. As we lead out into the tail, you can see the stripes do continue, but they don't go all the way. They do lead out a little ways, but then cut off. However, I will say it does still look pretty nice with that alternate coloration leading at least a little way out into the tail. I definitely would have liked to have seen it go the whole way, but that at least is a little bit of an improvement considering what we would normally get. And you can also see that the sculpt of the tail is really nice, like it just leads out and then comes up and then leads back down kind of in a very slight curve. And you can also see a little bit of a curve here from the upper side. I really do like the sculpting of the tail on this one. And then over here, the only thing that you're really going to see different, I would imagine, would be the fact that we have three slices for the extreme damage injury on this side compared to the two that we had on the opposing side. But Otherwise, it's going to look pretty similar overall and definitely doesn't really have too much else different going on. And then as far as the extreme damage goes, we just click that little button up there and then you can see that again it moves back to like the skin of our Atrociraptor rather than the injury. And then you push it again and now our Atrociraptor is injured. So it's a really nice figure, honestly. A lot better than I was expecting it to be, but again, it just doesn't have the right coloration to be Tiger. However, it does still look really neat as far as the coloration that they have chosen for it. As far as articulation goes, it's all your standard when it comes to the Mattel figures. You've got the articulated jaw. You also have the articulation in the neck, which is incredibly smooth. You can see you can basically create all sorts of different angles and movements for the head and neck area. Of course, completely turn the neck around and go exorcist and swivel it entirely, but... It's a very, very nice, very articulated neck for the Atrociraptor. You also have arm articulation forward and back, as well as out away from the body, and then leg articulation forward and back. I didn't think it was going to go out away from the body. It definitely does not. And then we have a swivel tail on top of everything. The tail kind of seems a little bit loose to me, actually, which is slightly frightening. But luckily, I won't be moving the tail very much in the future because I don't play with my figures. They just sit on a shelf and display themselves but for a size you are looking at lengthwise around the 
I'd say about seven and three quarter inches or around 19 and a half centimeters. And then for a height, you're looking at about three and three quarter inches or nine and a half centimeters for a size comparison. There is Mr. Pabo T-Rex, the Attack Pack, Colovasaurus, and Robert Muldoon from the Mattel Jurassic World toy line next to our Atrociraptor Tiger figure here, our Extreme Damage Atrociraptor Tiger. And you can see that he fits right there in the same size range as all of the other Atrociraptors basically that we've had from Mattel. And to show you that, there is Atrociraptor Tiger and Atrociraptor Red next to each other. And you can see how the legs are similar. It's really obvious to uh, point out the similarities of the legs because there are just specific tilts to the ankles and stuff that are like very obvious that those are the same legs that we had used on the other figure. Definitely looks to be the same head, potentially even the same neck sculpt maybe, but it actually looks a little shorter there on the Extreme Damage version. And uh, you can see that the arms are quite different, very different as far as the positioning and how they're held into the body on Atrociraptor Tiger. And also the tail, you can clearly see is different as far as the sculpt of that goes and the positioning. But they definitely share some similar parts, some parts that were reused and just tweaked a little bit for this new version of Atrociraptor Tiger. But they do look really, really cool together. So this brand new Jurassic World Dominion Atrociraptor Tiger, the Extreme Damage version, is a really nice figure. And I don't even know why I keep saying the Extreme Damage version, because we only have this version outside of the basic figures so far. So I'm sure we'll get more in the future. But as of right now, we only have this one as far as Tiger goes. It is still really cool to finally be able to complete the entire group of the Atrociraptors in the main Mattel line. We have been able to, I think they're in the minis entirely. I know they are definitely... Definitely in the basic figures as I've reviewed those in the past and now the main line and uh, again it's pretty nice looking figure the sculpt looks great it definitely looks like the Atrociraptors do look like in the film and uh, detail wise it is very nicely done like there's a lot of incredible fine detail to the figure as you always find in a Mattel sculpt they're always super highly detailed the paint job is really nicely applied and looks cool for the figure but like I said earlier the tones of color are definitely different on this compared to what Tiger looks like in the film so maybe at some point they can re-release Tiger with the actual screen accurate paint scheme but uh I guess I probably wouldn't hold my breath because sometimes there are just like specific dinosaurs that Mattel decides a color on and then they just refuse to steer from it like Velociraptor Echo they just really refuse to give us an Echo that looked like Echo did in Jurassic World so there is the potential that maybe Tiger will be the echo of Dominion here when it comes to the paint scheme. But again, it looks nice. It's just not screen accurate. The articulation is also beautifully done. Very, very smooth articulation. And you also have a fun action feature with the extreme damage feature. I do really quite like that. I think every time they've delivered an extreme damage figure, it's been pretty fun and uh, definitely has been a pretty cool kind of battle damage version of the dinosaur that they are meant to represent we just again now are calling them extreme damage but there's not really too much of a difference just a slightly different style of action feature as far as that goes but as a whole it is still a pretty cool figure is it perfect not even close because it's the wrong coloration the wrong tone of color and we could have used more paintwork on it like painted nails and stripes that lead out onto the tail but is it a really nice Atrociraptor figure? Absolutely. Definitely a very fun addition to the Mattel line. So if you are interested in picking this up, head to your local Walmart because the extreme damage here in the United States is a Walmart exclusive or it's supposed to be at least. So your best bet is to probably grab this from Walmart. So make sure you check your local Walmart and like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.